Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, going over 5.04, Types of Heat Transfer. Have your notes ready. So there are three types of heat transfer, and the first one is called conduction. So here's a picture of what conduction would look like. We have a Bunsen burner, so this hose is attached to a gas pipeline. And if you have a gas stove, it's the same idea. And then we lit the Bunsen burner, it's called, and it's giving off heat especially right here. And so what do we notice about this metal rod? So you can see here it's got a clamp and that's a, called a ring stand. And we have a metal rod. And what do you notice about it? Well, it's a lot hotter closer to the fire, right? And if you notice, we took the temperature at different points and it gets colder as we get farther away from the heat source, assuming we just turned it on. But look at this line, it's a nice steady slope. So of course there's some math behind it, but I'm not gonna make you do the math. Yes, you can all take a second to rejoice. So conduction, where are the atoms moving the fastest? So along this metal rod, where are the atoms moving the fastest? Well, it's hottest here, so they're moving the fastest closest to the flame. The atoms over the flame move the fastest. Now, are they going all over the place or just vibrating faster than the other molecules in the rod? Well, is this a solid, liquid, or gas? It's a solid, so... The atoms over the flame vibrate the fastest. Okay, so they're going... But they do not move down the rod. It's not like they go, whoa, hey guys, what you doing down here? No, they just vibrate faster than these do at the cooler end. Now, these molecules bump into neighboring atoms, which gives them more energy, and these bump into these guys, which give them more energy, and these bump into the next ones, which give their neighbors more energy, kind of like dominoes, until if we let this sit here for a while, the entire rod is equally hot. So the molecules don't move to the end of the rod. They stay in their original spot, but as they get hotter, what do they do? they vibrate faster. So we can say objects that transfer heat very well, so good at transferring heat, versus a poor conductor or insulator is not good at transferring heat. And can you think of some real life examples of conductors and poor conductors or insulators? Well, the number one thing for conductors is of course, Metals, all metals, most metals are very, very good. Some metals are better than others, but metals. And metals are good at transferring heat. Okay, poor conductors. If you can't think of any, think about this. You have probably miles of wire inside your home right now. Okay, think about the electronic stuff you have laying around. Okay, and if we would touch those bare wires, we could get shocked, even shocked enough that it could stop your heart but we don't. We grab our computer cords all the time. What is used to wrap around the wires to keep you from getting shocked, to keep the electrons or even some of the heat from transferring, those materials could be glass, rubber, plastic, wood, any of those are poor conductors or good insulators. Now, metals are good conductors, like we said, and other objects are not, and so now we're going to get into the why of it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to narrate a video for you. I know that's not nearly as much fun as watching the thing yourself, but there's a series. It was put out by the BBC, which is like the British Broadcasting Company, and it was called Eureka. And it's kind of corny, but yet it's really good. And they actually have little quick videos on a lot of things. Now, these are very different than like the crash course and the Bozeman science. These are really good for, okay, let's start at the basics or let's review some things or let's see how things all go together. And so for example, this one of Eureka is going to be talking about conduction. And they always start out with, uh, what do we know so far? We know molecules are made up of atoms and atoms are made up of a nucleus and varying numbers of electrons. The nucleus is a speck of matter right in the middle of the atom, and the electrons in an even tinier specks of matter, which whiz around and round so fast they appear to form a shell of the atom. 
And now we're going to relate that to conduction or to heat transfer. So if you stir a boiling liquid with a plastic spoon, after a while, it will start to get really warm. If you use a wooden spoon, it will start to get pretty warm. But if you use one made of metal, it might get too hot to handle. So the heat from the boiling liquid goes up through all the spoons. But it goes through at different rates. See how fast it went through the metal one? And that has to do with if it's a conductor or an insulator. So how does heat travel through things? From the hot liquid heats up the end of each spoon, the molecules, or individual atoms, start to vibrate more rapidly. And when the heated molecules, or heated atoms, vibrate faster, they start bumping faster and faster to their neighbors, which were slower. But now the neighbors are starting to go faster too, because they're moving the energy. So again, we notice this atom doesn't go way over here, it just, the energy, the vibrations increase as it gets passed on from molecule to molecule. It's like a row of dominoes. And so again, this is conduction. The domino effect, which conducts through the process of conduction. Nonmetals, such as wood and plastic, conduct heat slowly, so they're bad conductors or insulators. In contrast, metals conduct heat very rapidly. They are good conductors. But why? Why does it go so much faster through metals? Why is a metal a good conductor? What's the secret? Well, we have to look at the fact that atoms of metals are different. So, all atoms have a nucleus and the electrons are buzzing around like crazy, right? They're going so fast it almost looks like they're everywhere. We also know that the nucleus itself, because it's positive protons, attracts those negative electrons to keep them in that nice area. If we could look closely at a group of atoms in metal, what do we notice? We don't see those nice circles, do we? No, these electrons aren't really attracted to any nucleus. They're just going crazy wherever they want. They're free range. Like if you have free range chickens, they can go anywhere. It's the same idea. These electrons can go to whoever they want. They're not stuck to their specific atom. So when you look at the metal, what do you notice now about how things are heating up? The free electrons can bounce around even faster and collide with an atom over here and make that one hot. Or maybe this one way over here or way over there. It doesn't have to go neighbor to neighbor to neighbor. It goes to whoever happens to bump into that electron. So one way to think of that is like ping pong, right? The electrons would be the ball and they can go anywhere. And when they do, in this case, the ball causes the pin to light up. And the more rapidly the ping pong ball moves or the more rapidly the electrons move, the more it can heat it up. All right, now look, if you had a dozen balls, it would go crazy, right? Well, if you have a dozen electrons, all kinds of free range electrons, like you do in metals, there are millions, millions of electrons that go all over the place and that speeds up that transfer of that energy, which speeds up the heat. And that is why metal is a good conductor. All right, so if we go back to our notes, metals are good conductors because they basically have free range electrons that can go all over the metal object, causing it to heat up all over very quickly. Now, it still follows the same rule that the atoms stay there. Now, if you're like, wait a minute, you can't have it both ways. You're telling me the atoms stay there and you're telling me the electrons go all over the place. The nuclei stay in place. That's extremely important, okay? So again, you can't say the atoms are moving all over. The electrons are free range and bouncing all over like crazy in a metal, and that allows it to heat up much quicker, but the nuclei stay where they are.
So we have three types of heat transfer that we're going to talk about in this lesson. The first one we just did was conduction. Now our second type of heat transfer is convection. So just by looking at these two pictures, what do you notice is different? Well, this one is what phase, solid, liquid, or gas? This one we're looking at a liquid. Up here we were looking at a solid. What else do you notice? Here, as you get farther from the heat source, you, the temperature is cooler. Here, as you get farther from the heat source, well, it's like it's traveling in lines, right? It's kind of got the circle action going. So it's not like the entire bottom is hot and then it gets cooler, coolest. No, we see lines of heat going up. So those are two of the big differences between conduction and convection. So let's start with our convection notes. So I, before I go into the formal definition of convection, I wanted to give you a formal definition of conduction because I realized I really didn't do that. So conduction, the transfer of heat as the result of direct contact of rapidly moving atoms through a substance without moving the atoms of this substance. So remember, it's the energy that's transferring. They're all moving faster. It's, they get more and more heat energy, but the atoms that started here, the nuclei are still the atoms that are sitting there at the end. Convection is the transfer of heat because of the movements of the actual substance. So now the liquid molecules that are hot are rising to the surface because heat is less dense than a colder object in like 99% of the cases. Water is like one of the big exceptions, but heat rises and the cold molecules then are forced down. So the actual molecules are moving and trading places versus here the molecules stay still and just bump into each other and the energy just moves. Here the energy moves, the heat moves because the actual atoms are moving. And this of course only occurs in liquids and gases because at atoms that are in the solid state are stuck where they are. That's why they're solid, right? They can just vibrate faster or slower. Here they can actually physically move. Now convection can be caused by liquid or gases touching hot solids. So the fire is technically touching the metal of the teapot and the metal is hot and that's in contact with the little the liquid here in our tea kettle. And so it can be between liquids and solids in that when a liquid touches a solid but the liquid atoms are the only ones that are going to move. And remember heat rises and think about an example that affects your life every single day with gases. But hot air rising. So the big example would be wind. Wind. And yep, there's more examples too, like especially in winter in Minnesota, you know that your the top floor of a building is usually much, much warmer than the basement because again, heat rises and that causes these convection currents. You've probably heard of that especially on the news, the currents. Well they're convection currents because of the difference of the hot and the cold. And so we're going to get a start in Eureka number 27 convection. And again we want to relate it to other things that we've talked about. So if an object has the same density as the liquid that it's in, what's going to happen? Same density. Well then it will stay in the middle or float in the middle of that. If the object's more dense, it will sink to the bottom. If it's less dense, it will rise to the surface. So you know that with objects, less dense and it's going to float. So now let's apply it to convection. So where does the heat from the radiator that we all use in winter, where does it come from? Well, if it's a hot water one, the heat comes from the furnace and the boiling water. Why do we always keep it down here? Why don't we ever have your boilers or your heaters on the top? Well, because of what we were just talking about. If you put the furnace back down here where it belongs, you can see what's going to happen to the hot water system. So you heat the water and the water of course rises because it's hotter. And then after it goes through the radiator, it gets colder, and it just automatically wants to go back down because hot goes up and cold goes down. And it's because of the principle of buoyancy.
If you hold something that is less dense than water,